I want to say, uh, before we get into the meditation tonight, which is going to be the shortest thing I've ever preached at Pilgrim, and all of God's people said, Amen. <laughs> Bunch of sinners. <laughs> yes, save by grace. Okay, well, before I get into this, I'm going to just say a few thanks. First of all, thank you to um, Fu and Maureen Tran and also Alita Deepwell and Harry Leung for helping uh, organize both uh, the songs, the readers, and the tech side of things tonight. Can we give a hand up for these uh, wonderful folks? And my wife as well for helping with some of the design of things in terms of the screen. And also to Chek Lan Lu for um, Christmasing out the sanctuary. That's not even a word, but I just made it one. Uh, so also thanks to uh, those as well, Anne and Chek Lan, for their work. in uh... And everyone volunteering on Christmas Eve, a big thanks, a heartfelt thanks from me to you. Um, I can't do this part alone. We are a team, and uh, God's doing some amazing things at Pilgrim Church if you are here and you're visiting, we're so glad you're here tonight. Um, we would love to have you uh, come and join us for worship on Sunday. Maybe check out a home group, um, but we're glad you're here. We are in process of turning outward and, and just moving forward into a new future together as a body. And so we're super excited. We want to add, invite you to join us in that. Um, please consider this a personal invitation. If you need me to buy you coffee to make that more explicit, just let me know, okay? My number's uh, in the on the church. Just call the church. You'll get me. Uh, I'll get a hold of you. So we're glad you're here tonight as well. Um, this is a traditional lessons and carol service. As you've heard, the readings of scripture uh, start from what is the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, uh, Genesis, all the way through then to the Gospels and Matthew and John. And tonight I want to reflect on the reading that's going to happen before we sing our final song, our candlelight song uh, in John 1, and then also a reading that comes from the book of Hebrews in the New Testament uh, that is a traditional Christmas morning reading. And so just to share a reflection from uh, Matthew, Matthew Heuser, who is uh, writing about a missionary friend who is serving in a Muslim-majority nation. He said this, when we first moved to the Middle East, we heard that on festival days, everyone dresses in their best clothes and goes to visit their relatives and neighbors to celebrate. So for Eid, the festival, we carefully cleaned our apartment. We dressed up in our best clothes. We got some sweets and chocolates, which are traditional to hand out to visitors, and waited in our house. But nobody came to visit. Another missionary explained what we did wrong. He said, on festival days, the small visit the big, and the big give out presents. For example, everyone in a family visits their eldest brother or their parents or grandparents. And when they arrive, they would kiss the hand of the older person to show respect and honor. Don't worry, older folks, I'm not going to kiss your hand, but I do respect and honor you. The host would then care for their guests by feeding them, serving them, giving them gifts like good quality chocolate or money or other presents. As newly arrived foreigners, without social standing or relatives, naturally no one came to visit us, he goes on. We were considered small by the culture, so we were the ones who needed to do the visiting. And Matthew, reflecting on this, uh, his friend's words there said, it made me ponder the awesomeness of what we're celebrating today called the incarnation when God puts on human flesh. In other religions, humans, the small, will often we will try to visit God on our own strength and good works. But as much as we try to dress up nicely, we cannot be clean enough to enter God's house without polluting and disrespecting it. But in the incarnation, God decided to play the role of both the small and the big, and he humbled himself totally to become small so that he could visit us in our squalid house of our own self-righteousness. But he also was big, and that he played the role of host also when he came. And he gives gifts. And when you receive Christ, you receive the gift of reconciliation with God and now a personal direct access to God through Jesus. We receive the Spirit of God called the Holy Spirit, and the scripture says again and again that when we are in Christ, he spiritually clothes us with a new set of clothes. We are clothed with Christ, which means that when we receive Jesus, we are appropriately dressed and are free to enter God's house, which is not a building made with human hands, 
but the gathering of his people, we can enter into that space any time through prayer. We can enter into God's presence at any time because when we have said yes to Jesus, his spirit comes from the outside and working on us from the outside and now is working on us from the inside out and we are clothed with Christ. And this is a scandalous, beautiful, messy truth of Christianity. The two passages that you're going to hear part of, I'm not going to read all of it, not to steal the reader's thunder, but the one from John says this, the gospel of John, and there's four gospels in the New Testament that tell the story of Jesus, and they're probably the most important things for believers or people considering Christianity to read and to read again and again and again and to meditate on because they're the words, the life, and teachings of Jesus, the story of his birth, his teachings, his death on a cross, and his resurrection, and his promise to come again. And John begins this, and you're going to hear it, and I want you to listen to it twice tonight. You'll hear it again in a moment. It says, in the beginning of all things, in the beginning was the Word, and it's a capital W. It means Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was fully God, and the Word was with God in the beginning, and all things were created by Him. All things were created by Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been made. And then in verse 14 in that same passage, and you'll hear the full in just a moment, it says, Now the Word became flesh and took up residence among us. The language is literally he tabernacled that God pitched a tent in the midst of the camp of all of the people. He came among us. We saw his glory, the glory of the one and only, full of grace and truth who came from the Father. The other passage, just to reflect on for a moment this Christmas Eve, is from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and you're going to hear some similarities between that and John 1. And this is a traditional passage that is read on Christmas morning in churches that follow the uh, pattern of readings. And it says this, After God spoke long ago in various portions and in various ways, in various portions and in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets, in these last days he's spoken to us in a son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he created the world. The son, meaning Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory, is the radiance, is like uh, the radiance of his glory, the, the, like the beams coming from the sun. He is part of that same substance. He is the radiance, the thing that we see of the light, the radiance of God's glory and the representation of his very essence. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. And so when Jesus had accomplished cleansing for sins, removing the barriers between us and God, self-righteousness, worshiping our own thing, calling other things God, it says he, Jesus sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, and he became so far better than the angels as he has inherited a name superior to theirs. These two passages, there's many things that we could unpack, and I'm not going to unpack them all. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> But it tells us in Luke's account of Jesus' birth, we get a lot of the gritty details about the shepherds that has been mentioned several times tonight. And, and we get the angels and we get what was going on in the traveling and, and all of that. And in John's gospel, we get more of the big picture of what is going on in this. What is the story behind the story of Jesus and this scandalous thing that we claim as truth? And that God is moving in our lives. Jesus comes to change the very world we live in. As you'll hear in just a moment, there's also darkness fighting with us in this. And so when we come tonight, we light candles, we look at light, we talk about Jesus as the light, but there is a battle for us in terms of awakening to Jesus as being more than just a possible historical figure, but a God who is living right now and is present in this very place and desires to reside within each one of our hearts. And so this Christmas Eve, I want you to think of that, that this God who is above all things and before all things creates and then he enters creation. And not only does he enter it, he's been sustaining it. He's been sustaining you. He's been sustaining me. He's been keeping us alive. He's been keeping all of creation in motion, that his spirit is the thing, the story behind the story that's sustaining it all. The author of Hebrews wants us to know that God has spoken in the past. He says, in the, in the past, he spoke to our ancestors in this way, in that way. 
and by portions and by means and by prophets. But now he has come to reveal himself as a son. And so at Christmas we remember that. But it wasn't just once in Bethlehem. Because when he ascended into heaven, he sent his spirit and he said, my spirit will lead you into truth. And so tonight, you may be here tonight because the spirit of Jesus is still active and still speaking and still drawing. And he loves you so much, he doesn't want you to get your identity and worth out of the things that the world and the culture tells us to, but first and foremost, that you are beloved of God who sent his one and only son to encamp among us that we might know the Father's glory and that you might know him as alive today, even right now in 2017, December 24. He is in this place. And so maybe you came to Christmas Eve to light a candle and have that sort of schmaltzy feeling of Christmas ooze, which I love, it's fine. But the baby is also a king, and he's alive. And he grew up. And he wants to make a claim and call you into aliveness in him. So this Christmas Eve evening, God came and gave his gift as his son and kept giving gifts by the Spirit and reconciliation. But will you consider, you can't give God anything. You can't work your way to salvation. But you do have the blessed choice, enabled by his grace, to respond to his gift of salvation. So the best thing you could do, and as a pastor, I implore you, I plead with you, I proclaim before you, I humbly ask that would you consider giving your allegiance by faith to Jesus, saying yes to the gift that he's offered. He's enabled you by grace, but he won't force it down your throat. Will you respond to the gracious work of his spirit? Some of you are here tonight because, yeah, maybe someone invited you, of course, but they were just the intermediary. They were just the ambassador. The king is present by his spirit. Will you consider saying yes to him? and receiving the gift that he offers you of new life and light that will dwell within you and is greater than all other forces. For he's calling to you this Christmas Eve. Let's pray. As we join with nearly 2.5 billion Christians In celebrating your first coming, Lord Jesus, we are aware that by your Spirit you're present now and that you will come again in one day in glory. And that your kingdom is not known by boundaries or borders or bombs or politics or culture or ethnicity, but it's known as a people who have said that our King is the one who is love and has revealed himself as love. And he frees us from the enslavement of sins and darkness and self-destructive patterns. And in that we are made strong and new. And so, Father, tonight on this Christmas Eve 2017, we come before you. And if there's anyone in this house that's ready to take that step, Father, I pray that you would, as you continually enabled them by the grace you've sent before, that they would respond to that grace tonight that we can really give you nothing other than our praise and our thanks and our, our yes. I said, yes, we receive. We open, we stay, we're, we respond. And Father, for those in this room that are struggling, maybe the family situation is tough. Maybe there's issues at work or issues in the body. We know that you love us and you care for all of those things. But ultimately, none of them can separate us from your love when we receive the gift. And so, Lord, we turn to you once again, believer or not, seeker, questioner. We say, continue to work on us, Lord, and we will respond. 
Thank you, Jesus, that you came to earth, you put on flesh, you dwelt among us, and we have seen your glory. Glory revealed in humility, the glory revealed in service, the glory revealed in upside-down power from the bottom up. Just as that miracle happened so many years ago, may the miracle happen in our hearts, as the carol writer said, be born in us again today that we might be born again and renewed spiritually. In Jesus' name, amen.